is Tuesday morning, I'm up in the borders and with a bit of luck today, that digger, that six and a half ton digger um, that uh, stopped suddenly about three weeks ago is going to track off the hillside and uh, we're all going to be very happy because of that. That's the plan anyway. Right, what I need to do is um, try and remember everything that I need tools wise to save me multiple trips backwards and forwards across said hill. Beautiful day though, uh, sun's shining, it's about two degrees though, so I'm not going to get a suntan today, but uh, oh, it's nice to have bright blue skies for a change instead of wind and the occasional rain, so well, uh, we'll get packed up, I'm going to put my boiler suit on because it's a bit fresh, so I'll, uh, I'll get suited and booted and I'll catch you over at that machine. Oh, it's also a new tool Tuesday as well. If you remember last Friday, not Friday, gone Friday before, I was servicing that 350 shovel in that sand quarry and I snapped the end off my uh, breaker bar taking those uh, bungs out of the axles. Um, so I switched to my half inch ratchet and uh, anyway, all was well, but I left my half inch ratchet somewhere on the machine and uh, yeah basically for the last week or so I've been down to this stubby little ratchet, half inch ratchet and this stubby little uh, breaker bar as well. But anyway that Friday, no it was the Monday morning when I realised I'd lost my half inch ratchet. That evening when I got home I had a bit of look on the internet. I picked that up, should have been 80 quid. Picked it up for 44 pounds on uh, the trusty old Amazon. And uh, anyway, it's been sat in a box in the house and I keep on forgetting to put it in the back of the van. I went online to buy a new one of these and then I was sidetracked by that and forgot to get a fresh one of them or at least a fresh doodah for the end. But, uh, Stupid thing is, there's a bit around the corner that sells uh, the Brittle Expert stuff. Around the corner from the yard, but as you've seen, I've just been that busy that uh, I've completely forgotten to go and get that replaced. So hopefully after today, when I get this machine up and running, uh, I'll get back through to Carlisle. There's a job at the yard I need to do. Um, so maybe once I've got that done, I can nip around the corner and get a new... Uh, breaker bar end um but yeah the ratchet the half inch ratchet that i lost uh, it's not a swivel headed one um and after i'd ordered it the following day the shovel driver phoned and say oh i found your ratchet or rather a wagon driver pulling into the quarry found it on the floor and he gives us it so um i've got that half inch ratchet to pick back up as well uh, next time i'm passing so Winner, winner. I'll have multiple half inch ratchets now. Right, I'll get my tool bag put together and we'll go for a long walk. So, just to refresh your memory with this machine, if you haven't seen the previous video, the machine was running um, and working away grand and then all of a sudden it just cut out as though somebody had turned the key to stop it. Um, after a bit of backwards and forwards and a couple of site visits, eventually we found that this arm here wasn't able to move the throttle body uh, when we took this motor actuator out. We did come with a new motor actuator because the fault code was for the motor actuator. Um, we replaced the motor actuator, still had the same fault, although when we unplugged the motor actuator and put the new one onto it into fresh air, we still got a fault code for it. So I'm fitting the new motor actuator for the time being. Um, yeah, we found this arm was stiff so the motor wouldn't move this arm which would allow the machine to rev up and move to the start position. So I took this head off and found a broken spring on the, on the body of the head. Uh, we've got this new body in the box now. I'm going to try and fit it but there's a lot to try and get sort of lined up. I need to get this fork lined up with the head and also on the head there's a valve that needs to slot into this piece here. Um, as well as lining up the dowels and sort of trying not to make too much disturbance. So, 
that's what I'm going to do. I'll put you on a time lapse um, and uh, I'll come back to you once we've kind of got it fitted up a bit. I've got all my bolts laid out. I think I can remember just about where everything goes. Obviously it was oh, 10 days ago now when I was last at it. So, and it was also dark when I left it. So uh, yeah. <laughs> took a lot of doing <coughs> yeah um throttle fork that runs through here you've got to get sat onto a locating bit which revs the machine up and basically you've got about two or three mil um of where you can actually see it to locate it but at the same time that shaft there has got a flat spot on it which you need to locate on the pump um yeah, it took a lot of fiddling about, but it's down now. Uh, I'm gonna put my hand inside there and work the throttle. I can feel it moving nice and smoothly. It's just a case of putting it. That was, that was always gonna be the worst bit to try and get back together, that bit there. Um, I was probably a bit naive in thinking that I could put it on with the uh, throttle actuator because it's, uh, it was easy to fit when you could see where that slot was to slot it in and then you rotate it like that till the holes line up and that's it locked in place because that piece there doesn't sort of really only turns that much. Um, so yeah, you've got to try and get it slotted on, turn it, that locks it in place so it's pushing as well as pulling the throttle on and off. Whew. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I've got four bolts that hold this head on and I'm going to run them up finger tight. They're all located on the dowels and everything as they should be. Uh, well, the head's located on the dowels. See, it's just about flush there now. Um, so what I'll do is I'll tighten them in opposites until they're sort of tight enough, in my opinion. Put the bolts in that hold this sort of, call it a throttle body or something like that if you want. Um, put all them in and uh, yeah, just quietly start building it back up. I tell you, it's a lovely day, but I'm, I'm in the shade at the minute and it is cold when you're out the shade. <laughs> this all mounted up now. I just fitted the throttle actuator. Um, now when I fitted the throttle actuator last time obviously this piece in here wasn't able to move because this spring had snapped um, and you've got to get that slot into that dowel and then rotate it so it's got a hold of it. Now it's quite easy to push that throttle body now there is a chance when you, if you don't get it in square that you push that throttle body and then turn it and locate the holes here like that, that it isn't located properly. Uh, and the way I've just checked that is to pull the throttle body out and it's actually locked in place. It won't go anywhere. So I know that that should be correctly installed. Um, just wondering though whether or not I should have put there's an engine oil pipe that comes from here onto here which obviously will lubricate the pump. Um, I'm just wondering whether or not I should have fitted that before I fitted the throttle body so I won't run the bolts in just yet and I'll offer this pipe up and see what it looks like. <laughs>
taking shape now. That's the motor body on, the bracket fitted, uh, all the wiring sort of tidied up into the P clips. Um, so all I've got left to do now is four injector pipes and the feed and return pipes. Um, now this pipe here has got a filter on the end of it. So if anybody's ever had a machine that's had a lot of rubbish through the fuel system, uh, there is actually a filter that sits on the end of there. So um, yeah, there's something to look out for. I didn't even know it was there till I pulled it off that other night. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on that. back together just leave it at that now let somebody else come and start it and see if it works shall we <clears throat> so uh, what I've left off is the feed pipe onto the injection pump what I'll do is I'll just turn the ignition on make sure I've got fuel coming up here and then it'll be a case of cranking it over and I might have to bleed the injection pipes. Hopefully we get to a point where this machine will move again. Oof. It's like uh, all this hard work that's gone into rebuilding it. It's like sitting a test, isn't it? You, you do your very best. You try and answer all the questions correctly. And then... Uh, the, 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 you're just not 100% sure on the results. Right, put the isolator on and we'll give it a go. Well, I've got fuel going into it. So the little electric lift pump's doing its thing. I literally just turned the ignition on and ran around here, so I don't know whether I've got any error codes yet. Oh. Well, my aircon filter needs replacing. That's all it's saying. Right. Let's see what happens. Well, that's good. It's wanting to turn over. I'm not starting yet. Uh, I really. Really, really, really don't want to flatten the battery, cranking it. My van's a long way to get a jump cable to. Uh, uh. Right. Let's see if I've got any fuel in the... It's a good thing that it's turning over anyway. It means that... Uh, turning over it wasn't doing that previously so that's a good start right is it getting fuel all right so i've had the injector pipes cracked off obviously i can't see if there's any diesel coming up here um because i'm in the cab turning it over but there is fuel running along the head there so I presume it's come out of there. I'm pretty sure it was fairly dry when I when I started the job. Oh, oh, oh. right. Give it another crank. Oh. It's not easy getting into this cab on an angle like this. Oh. Right. Come on, you dancer. Let's be having you. Hmm. 
nothing just yet. If, I had, if the machine hadn't been sat for so long, the isolator has been off this whole time we've been away from the machine, but obviously when we've been investigating it, we've been keying on and leaving the ignition on and testing. If it hadn't been sat for so long, I would crank it for a bit longer, but I just, I really don't want to uh, flatten this battery. Crack these off again. What I might do is set you up on here, and then I can watch the footage back and see the result coming out of these pipes. Right, I've watched that back. It's fairly clear to me that there's fuel getting up to all four cylinders. So that's good. I know uh, my colleague, when he very first came to it, he found no fuel getting up here. So, it's a good start. I just need to come and kindle up. I'm not 100% sure. I know with the Doosan engines, the, I mean, it's common rail as well, like, so it's, uh, it's a different story, I suppose. But I know cranking, uh, like, engine RPM should be about 270 RPM before a DLO6 Doosan engine will fire. I'm not sure what the Yanmar engine's like. Oh, the suspense is absolutely killing me. So I don't want to walk back to the van. I want to put all my stuff in the bucket and track it back. Ugh, I've not missed anything ever. I? I can't have done like. I'm getting fuel up there. Keep trying. <laughs> Right, since you last saw me, it's been about 40 minutes. Um, battery's getting a bit low now. I've been back up here and I've double checked. I'm getting diesel at all my um, injector pipes. I am getting diesel. Uh, I did go back to the van, get some easy start. Just the battery was getting weak and I thought a bit of easy start might just help it. I've only given it two shots of easy start. I've not gone daft with it because I know what that stuff's like. Um, but both times that I used it, it sort of, all it really did was throw the starter motor out. It wasn't enough to get it set off. So I knew something just wasn't right. Um, so what I did, I'll show you on the old piece here. Bye bye. Um, yeah, so in the top of, where can I show you that's best? See, on the top of there, look, you can see in this hole here, um, when you rev the machine up, you can see this whole body, you can see that whole body uh, moving and you can see it from there. So I took that cap off, um, turned the ignition on and sort of moved the throttle motor and you could see it was working. So I knew the throttle motor was attached to the to the throttle body in here. So I knew that was working. Then I kind of took notice of, you remember this, um, well, I looked inside here, I could see holes in certain positions that you can see in there. Uh, obviously that shaft that goes down through there had a flat spot on it. And I did notice that it is possible to have it that way or that way. So what I've done is I've taken that cap off I've pulled that shaft out, turned it through 180 degrees, reset it in there, and da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. bear with us. 
Right, are you ready? Woohoo! Am I relieved? Or am I relieved? I can tell you now, I am relieved. Oh, feel that sunshine on my face. That is, that's a feeling of success. Marvellous, right. Pull that air filter back in, get it back off this hillside. Right, I've switched the machine off. I've leveled it up, then switched it off before I go any further. Um, I'm just gonna check the engine oil level. Obviously it's been on a fair slant for the last three weeks. Um, so I just wanna make sure the engine oil level's right before I head back towards the van with it. Um, because I really don't want to have another problem. Yeah, it is a bit low look, but uh, that should get me back to the machine, uh, back to the van. We'll give it a health check once we get back over there. Obviously the coolant level is low. We'll top up the engine oil. Um, I'm just going to go quietly back over there. I'm not going to rev it flat out just yet. I just want to sort of quietly head back in that direction now, so. I am so relieved to that. That is a buzz that when you get something like that going, especially when it's sort of been off the road for this will be coming up towards its third week now. Um, and it's not something that in one respect, uh, obviously we've been waiting a long time for <coughs> parts arriving. It's not necessarily our fault, um, but you know, this is somebody's livelihood, this machine. And if it's off the road, then uh, it's not good, is it? Right, I was gonna film the victory tracking out kind of a thing, but um, I really need to concentrate. There's not really anywhere I can put this phone where it'll hold still. Uh, I need hands and feet to get across this stream. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Well, I'm glad to be back up here anyway. So like I say, I'll just uh, check everything over and then um, he wants it parked in a certain place so I'll go and park it up. But uh, yeah, the throttle dial's working, it revs up, it revs down, when you let go of the joysticks, the auto idle kicks in as it should. I'm made up. I am. They're the sort of jobs that you kind of love to hate. <laughs> um, yeah, especially, what's this now? One, two, third visit. Uh, we've got it. Right, I'm gonna have a bite of lunch. What I'll do is I'll uh, I'll leave it ticking over. Well, I'll check out levels and everything top up. I'll leave it ticking over. Um, just make sure there's no leaking before I go and park it up for him. So, as you can see, a bit of a behind the scenes look at the... Uh, Rickaby show. Um, the show starts tomorrow and runs till Thursday. Um, so this is my last job of the day. I won't be able to show you it because it's uh, I'm going to be fitting an immobiliser. So I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to show you how to fit it because uh, people can then reverse engineer how to unfit it and steal the machine. So. This is what I'm at, but yeah. Quick look around the Rickaby show. So put all these tents up like that. Over there is the workshop door. The loading ramp here. And we have this big indoor show at the start of the season for all the farmers. And we uh, put on a few diggers as well for folk to see. So yeah, 
Right, I'm going to put this immobiliser in, it'll take us the rest of the day now, it's, what time is it? 3 o'clock, definitely will take us the rest of the day. Hopefully I get it finished, it's not in 100 pieces for when folks are coming around tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I'll be at the show, um, depending on how we get on tomorrow, late afternoon and uh, tomorrow evening. But by the time this video comes out, it will be tomorrow evening, so... I'll also be about on Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening as well if there's anybody local coming to the show. Right, I'll crack on with this. Before I catch you tomorrow, blooming gone are the days now when you have an instruction booklet, you've got a blooming CD that you need to install. Paperless society that we live in today. Oh, it's just after five o'clock. Put my keypad in, immobilizer's fitted, so I turn the ignition on. Got a red light, and if I try and start it, nothing. If I put the key, uh, the uh, password in, should get a green light now. Job the peach. Right, home time. We'll catch up with you in the morning. And in the morning, I'll decide what I'm going to go and do because I have a feeling I'll service a 14 ton digger. Um, but we'll see what happens because obviously it's going to be Wednesday tomorrow and I'm waiting to see. If that 140 with the add blue fault's gonna be a pain in the backside. Morning. It is what day is it today? Thursday today. Um I've got a bit of paperwork I need caught up on. Obviously we were very busy last week. Um so I've got that to do. Uh I'm gonna go and service a 140 and then uh, come back through to Carlisle mid-afternoon, wash the van. And then I'll go and spend a bit of time on the Rickaby show stand unless uh, unless out else crops up. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do today, hopefully. Paperwork first though. So I'm at my uh, 140-5 and this one's getting a thousand hours service today. I don't think the machine's been running. No, coolant temperatures at zero, so I'll uh, I'll start the machine up and uh, let it run for a bit and I'll also set up the travel motors. First job. But it's a lovely day. What a nice day it is. I seen on uh, Instagram this morning a lot of folk have got snow but we seem to have avoided it, thankfully. Right, we'll get this manoeuvred into position and uh, drop some oils. So everything's uh, lined up and ready to drop oils. Machine's obviously on this wash bay, but most of the work I'm doing is at the back, so I'm not gonna hopefully drop anything down that grid. Am I? Um, it's, like, it's like it's halfway through being washed. Do not envy folk. Haven't to wash diggers, because um, I've done it myself and feel like all you're doing all day is moving grease from one end of the machine and splattering it all up the rest of the machine. So, right, uh, get some final drives dropped and then uh, move to the engine out.
Uh, so when this job was booked in, it was for a thousand hours service, but it's actually on 2000 hours. So I haven't got air filters with us, but I can send them out. I've also remembered when I took this pilot filter out, um, I was like, bloody hell, look at the color of that oil. And then I remembered it's on biodegradable oil. Um, so really we should be, by the manufacturer's specifications, we should be changing this oil. You can see the sludge of this bio oil built up, it's like grease. Um, so the customer's got a barrel of biodegradable oil. Uh, so we're gonna change out the hydraulic oil on this today. Uh, he's also got lots of empty 20 litre drums, so ideal. Ideal, it's a good job it was in his yard. Right, where am I up to? I need to put engine oil in it. All I've got left to do is two cab filters and the return filter. Obviously I'll put the return filter in once I've changed out the hydraulic oil. Oh, don't often show you the slew motor getting filled up, do I? But I'm on with it. It's bloody tedious, like. Oh, we're on the end of the dipstick, so there's only a couple of more couple more pumps and we'll be somewhere near it. Splummin. Like I say when the grease wash this off, it's covered in grease everywhere. It's slipped off that step. Quietly pump away now. That's a quiz question. We'll do a quiz question because I haven't done one for years. Does anybody know what that's for and what it does? Answer in the comments below. 10 digger diary points if you guess it right. The oil out the tank and uh, it's filled. I think these, I think that one might be a 30 litre drum there. So 30, 25, 55, and another 25, 80 litres or so. It wasn't on the, it was low. It wasn't just on the glass there, so be about right. Um, the drill, the battery went in it. I had worried that I'd burnt the drill out, but it was just the battery. I uh, I am getting a Milwaukee transfer pump, I've decided. Um, my pal Sean up the road there, uh, I used to know, he's been sending me snapchats of his Milwaukee transfer pump and all the different <laughs> uses that he's found for it. He says he wouldn't be without it now and uh, that's made up my mind, I am going to get one. Um, I did have a look online this morning and I went to go and buy it and uh, I needed my card details and didn't have them to hand so my lunch break today, that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy a transfer pump. I think it'll make loading shovel axles a lot easier. I mean this is, this setup works but you just feel like you just gonna burn a drill out. Having said that, transfer pump, I could probably buy two drills, <laughs> two drills for the price of a transfer pump, but in the long run, it'll be a good thing. So, right, uh, he's fetched us two 25 litre drums, so I'd probably need another two to fill this tank back up. God, it's horrible stuff, that plumbing. Bio oil, look at the colour of it. Like, some folks say it smells like chip shops, but it really doesn't. It just smells, it smells vegetable y. But yeah, you can see on this return filter actually, see how it's sort of started to rip a deform a bit. Don't know if that's out to do with the hydraulic oil. Uh, but. Yeah, so it's the oil 
Yeah. Well, the oil is drawn through it, isn't it? So it will suck these sides in. Anyway, I'll get the new one out and hopefully some fresh oil will make can only improve things, can't it? Right. Remember to put this thing back in. Right, I'll chuck some oil in it and you'll join me in the seat when I'm starting it, hopefully. Right, I've just had it warmed up. I've checked out pressures, everything's good that way. Then we at now five past one. I'll sit and have my lunch and then I'll uh, head back through to Carlisle, wash the van and then I'll, um, I'll stand on the shore stand for an afternoon. It's what my salesman wants anyway. Right, that's the van washed. Um, we'll leave it at that for today. I'm gonna go into the show now and uh, do a bit of talking and whatnot. But uh, what I'll do tomorrow, I'll give you a quick tour of the show. Um, and you'll see that on Friday's episode if you don't get a chance to come through this afternoon, this evening or tomorrow. All right, so I'll round the video up at that for today. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, if you have, let me know. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And for more bits and pieces throughout the week, check out my Instagram, Ali Stigger Diary. Right, have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow.